What's up, Niche Gamer Nation? This is episode 33 of the Niche Gamer Cast. Um, so first, I, I wanted to apologize about the previous episode. I uh, didn't have my mic configured properly. That's why I sounded like I was talking through a cup or something or from underneath a blanket. Maybe, maybe I was because I was just laying on the floor here in the basement because I don't have a desk anymore. Um so anyway, um, so yeah, hooray, <laughs> moving on, um, so tonight it's just me and Carl, um, so say hi Carl. Hello everyone. And, uh, I'm Brandon, the, you know, the editor, um, Carl's one of the senior writers and reviewers here, and, um, so we got a lot of talk, uh, a lot, a lot to talk about tonight, um, which is pretty cool, um, we have a different topic than usual usually we have like kind of controversial topics and things like that but you know we we are a gaming site we're going to talk about games and a a big um a big company that's related to gaming you know microsoft and um yeah so if you don't like it if you if you want us to uh to keep banging that controversy drum then sorry you know we're you know, that's not what we're about uh, <laughs> I think at this point, people are kind of getting sick and tired of the constant Gamergate this, Gamergate that. I won't mention names, but there's a couple sites out there, one in particular, who are on my RSS feed, and every single day, it's like they're bringing up two or three month old things and rehashing them like it's a new article. And I'm like, dude, dude that horse is not only dead, the buzzards have cleaned it of flesh. It's nothing but bone. Let it rest. <laughs> yeah, man. I. I, I saw some of the responses in our previous um, episode, and it really made me feel better because, um, you know, I, f I feel like we did get a, you know, a big chunk of, of traffic coming in from Gamergate, and obviously that's that's dropped off. Uh, you have the people who are only looking for Gamergate content, and then you have the people who found us through Gamergate, you know, and they and they stayed. You know, they say, hey, this is a really cool site. This is the kind of site I'm looking for. The kind of games that, that I want to play, and um, you know, so so that's really cool. I, I think ultimately that's that's the the how to put it. I, I think between that and how we're trying to set a new standard with our policies and stuff, you know, those are the two best things to come from Gamergate for us. Um, so. I don't know. You know, it's still going on. You know, there's all this stuff happening, but you know, we're not going to talk about it today. So, so sorry if you want us one thing to. I, oh, what's up? One thing I will say is I don't like. I, I've seen people mention this uh, on Twitter where they say, uh, um, "How do I phrase this?" They're trying to say niche gamer is a oh we only got popular because of Gamergate, and we were here long before Gamergate was a thing. I found your site when Zillia one came out which had to have been fall of 2013 it was like right after right after I moved up here and I found your site because I wanted Japanese culture and Japanese games without that elitism that a certain other site shows and I'm getting really tired of so that's how I found it and that's how a lot of other people found it now if people found our site because of a Gamergate this past October, hey, that's great, but we're not a Gamergate site. If you don't like it, if you, you know, it's late, so my brain's not working, but you get the <laughs> gist of what I'm saying. I don't like how people insinuate that this site just sprung up two days after Gamergate and was latching onto it like a, a vampire bat. That's not what this is about. We We were here before, like over a year before it even became a tag on Twitter. Yeah, man, we, um, and if if you guys go back into our our massive catalog of thousands of articles, you know, I mean, we have a lot of content, um, you know, and we've written editorials about these kinds of subjects before Gamergate about censorship, about sexuality and gaming, about the you know the the disparity between violence, uh, getting a pass, you know, uh, in comparison to sexuality. You know, we've talked about this stuff many times, so you know, I think. Where a lot of other people have just now started talking about it and questioning it and things like that, we've always questioned these things. You know, we we've always talked about it. Um, it's always been 
part part of our prerogative to to, to try discussing the, these these subjects and you know and I, and I think on the one hand I appreciate stuff like like Rami Ismail um, and I just realized we're talking about Gamergate a lot even though I said we wouldn't <laughs> yeah uh, I know I I'm sorry for bringing that up nah it's it's cool I I, I mean I, I I like to to clarify things you know because you know the 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 collective internet does have a short attention span. Um, so, you know, um, it's just interesting when, like, say, the Guardian piece went up where they interviewed Rami Ismail, and, of course, they, they, they pulled him on Gamergate, and, uh, you know, and I think, I think that article and, and our response to it where I said, hey, thanks for the shout-out, Rami, you know, we'll take it, you know, smiley face, and, um, a lot of people were really angry about that, and, and I don't think they, they fully took in what he said, you know, um, and and I understand people don't like that we're being called the the moderates or the or the, the traditionals or whatever the hell you want to you want to consider what they're now labeling Gamergate as, you know. But that correlation does make sense to me. You know, like I I, I look at that and it, you know I I think about it and it makes sense despite the fact of of how insane it is. So, <laughs> I mean, in a way, you have these these crazies who, you know, are are in gaming. You know, they're devs or gamers or pundits and writers or etc. Um, who are progressive just for the sake of being progressive. You know, they 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 want to sell a game, you know, that, because it has a lesbian in it or something. You know, they they that's that's their prerogative and you know and and that's fine, but I think. The one thing that we've always stood against is people trying to censor games that don't bend to that agenda, you know. So let's just all sum it up in one simple uh, declaration. We've been banging this anti-censorship, pro, uh, pro fantasizing drum for two years now, long before everybody else. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we ain't new to this game. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and by the way, if you hear an infant crying, it's my son. Um, he has a the colic right now, so he's just crying. And you know, for for those who aren't parents, who or who haven't raised kids, it's where they just cry for no reason. You know, he has a clean diaper. He was just fed. He was actually sleeping, but he's just crying for no reason. So my wife is taking care of him so yeah hooray parenthood <laughs> um yeah i know going over my uh in, my uh sister or my brother-in-law's house over the holidays their little kids do the same things their babies it would be in the middle of the night we're sleeping in the guest bedroom and the kids just start screaming at one in the morning <laughs> i never get any sleep when i go there yeah man um and Holy shit! <laughs> Sorry, I have my Facebook feed open in another tab, and uh, one of my coworkers took a picture of. Uh, it looks like is that Walmart? It's uh, I can't tell. Um, it's I haven't been to that one then. He he lives in Northeast Philly, so he lives up in like the Franklin Mills area. Anyway, he said Super Bowl plus impending snowstorm equals massive grocery store run and the the shelves. Are those chips? Yeah, those are chips. They're just, like, empty. There's, like, nothing left. I believe it. Hey, I believe it. I was forced to go to ShopRite this morning because I got up, and my wife did her usual, I'm hungry. I want something to eat. So I asked her, what do you want for dinner? Because I got a pizza, like, three weeks ago that's been sitting in the um, freezer. I made that today. That's what I ate. She's like, no, I need spaghetti, but... Yeah, it was nice. a DiGiorno stuffed crust. Ooh. And she said, no, I, <laughs> she said, I, I need spaghetti. And I'm like, well, I have spaghetti up there. Yeah, but I can't eat just the sauce. I've got to put stuff in it. So she gave me this long list. I want mushrooms. I want fresh garlic. I want grated cheese. I oh, want yes. shredded cheese. I want the, the this Chinese long list of all too. these. Yeah, she likes all that stuff. Awesome. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go to shop right and get it. 
I forgot that there was a snowstorm. I go to ShopRite, the entire place is fucking packed. I couldn't even find a parking space. I had to park in, like, a parking lot across the street and walk over. I go to ShopRite, fight people tooth and nail for, like, the last piece of meat because she wanted <laughs> beef for it. And I, I get out of there, like, bloodied and bruised. <laughs> like, I'm never doing this again. Dude, <laughs> but I got her her spaghetti sauce, so. It's crazy in, in the city, too. Like, um, um, we, we tend to avoid it, but there's been a few times where we do, for, for whatever reason. And, uh, and there's just chaos. Like, it, it looks like a zombie, like a, like a, like a post-apocalyptic movie. People just looting and stuff. <laughs> like, it's just insanity, you know? Um, as long know. as I have peanut butter and a bag of bread, I'm good. That's all I need in life. We, just give me peanut butter and some bread. You can't forget the bread and the milk. Gotta get the bread and the milk! You know, that's, that's the only... <laughs> I can get tap water. Hey, where I come from, you're lucky if you have that, so that's fine by me. My dad, every year that, I, that I've known him, going on 30-plus years, his breakfast always consists of burnt toast with peanut butter on it. Don't ask me nice. why. I mean, hey, I, 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 I love me some peanut butter on, like, you know, crackers and stuff, and I actually... I was for the life of me, I couldn't find any because we were in the Chinese supermarket on uh, yesterday actually, and um, and I bought these crazy gigantic square Chinese crackers, and I'm like, well, these will do, but they're kind of sweet and salty. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, she gets them too. She gets <laughs> she has a whole entire box of them up there. I've tried them; they're different, but it's not really my kind of thing. Anyway, we've been talking about nonsense for about ten minutes. Let's move on to, <laughs> to the news. I, Whoops. I, I feel like we. I, I wanted to make up for how short the previous podcast was, and I I don't want this stuff to get cut because I think it you know it adds character and it's kind of fun you know it's, it's whatever. Um, I I I feel like our competitors. You don't really know the writers. You don't really know them as people. You know, and you don't. And I I, I don't I don't quite like that. Like I. I want people to, to really to, to know us, to be able to talk to us on Twitter, and to be able to just know who we are, and you know we'll just have fun, you know. And you know, and hey, I mean, you can you can talk. I, I, I respond to anybody on Twitter, you know, and you can add me on Facebook. Although I did lock it down, but you know, it's it's whatever. Just message me, and you know, I can add you or whatever. It's it's yeah. Anyway. Um, so, uh, <laughs> on to gaming. Um, so the niche news of the week. There's a bunch of stuff. Um, I figured maybe we'll start with the, the localization news and stuff like that. So, uh, so first up, Mega Gamer uh, is asking which games to localize next. Um, and I kind of feel like I, I worded that uh, headline a bit, um, a bit loosely because people started screaming about, you know, uh, shit on. On, on Vita and stuff, and I'm like they, they, they don't they don't do that. Like their bread and butter, are visual novels on PC. You know that's that's what they do. Um, it's easier and cheaper to make for PC. That's why. Oh yeah. Um, so I mean that's cool. You know they're they're trying to reach out to their fans and you know poll people. Um, so it's going to be interesting, especially um, the discussion happening on that thread. Um, it's it's interesting to see p- people's expectations and uh, the reminder that Alice Soft, um, we're, we're we're not going to really see anything in English by at least not officially by them like ever. I mean it'd be it, I, I would be stunned if it, if it happened, but um, I mean we are getting Euphoria, um, which is a hilarious name for that game if you. <laughs> If you haven't read about it, just go and search for Euphoria on our site. Um, Euphoria is not bad. Oh, you've seen it? I, I mean, I've only like I've only uh, seen. No, I mean the name. <laughs> I don't. Oh. Unfortunately, I know very little about visual novels. I know. Shoot me. But uh, Euphoria is not bad. I mean, uh, you, it could mean anything. It doesn't necessarily mean sex with very large-breasted lollies. No, it's um, it's actually. <laughs> It's actually quite the opposite. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's, uh... Oh, small-chested milfs? <laughs> no, <laughs> We're 600-year-old uh, demons that that look, um, you know, uh, a, a prepubescent-like. Um, 
you know, or as Jason Schreier would say, uh, uh, baby faced lollies for pedophiles. Um, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna let that down. I'm never gonna. <laughs> if I ever meet him in person, I'll say, hey, so, um, you know, hold on. Uh, hey, so, uh, by the way, I, I have to be eating. That's the key thing here to make it look so very nonchalant. So, uh, having a young, attractive face makes a woman pedophile material. No, is, is that um, is that what you're getting at there? Yeah, I guess he's never met many Asian women because I can tell you my wife and pretty much all the females in her family look very, very young. Yep. Yeah. I tell her all the time. I say, "Oh, you have such a cute little baby face." <laughs> oh man, I um. Oh boy. Imagine me squeezing her cheeks as I say that, because that's what I. That's a you cute baby face. <laughs> and no, she doesn't mind. I'm sorry, feminists. She doesn't mind. She thinks it's cute. Oh, whoops. Uh, I. I was gonna. Nah, I'm not gonna say it. All. <laughs> She's 34. She likes being called young. Who doesn't? No, nah, it was something else. <laughs> I just. I all right. I had my mind in the gutter. I was reading a, a hentai do, doujin um, earlier today, so I totally, you know. But you know what gets me is those people, and I don't want to veer off course in the subject here. But I don't like how they talk about uh, fighting stereotypes all the time. But yet they stereotype, in, in this instance, people who like visual novels or who like anime. It's like, oh, you're all a bunch of pedophiles, like in these baby face lollies. Oh, yeah. Thanks for per. Thanks for um, putting more fuel into that stereotype, dude. I'm glad you like that kind of stereotype. You just don't like all the other ones. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating to see how 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 two faced these people are, you know. And um, and I'm glad to see people calling them out on it, you know, because that's that's not, you know, what what our site is for, in my opinion. I mean, we we've talked about it, but. Um, like me personally, I'll, I'll I'll call them out on it. It's because it's bullshit, you know. But um, you know, you, you get these people um, who who make a career out of it, you know. And um, I think it was oh yeah, Total Biscuit. Uh, he called out Brianna Wu yesterday for he, he and I'm paraphrasing here because I forget what the tweet actually said. But he said, you know, I'm pretty much fucking done with Brianna Wu being a a, a giant um like attention seeker it was something along the lines of that and people were like oh you know btfo oh you know and i'm like ah, it's it's funny you know I, I retweeted it but um i don't know did you hear the thing that she uh she posted something on twitter i think it was yesterday or the day before where she said uh I think beta males are extremely attractive i would rather have them than some alpha I was laughing my fucking ass off when I read that. I could Jesus. say things about it, but I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it at that. Fill in the blanks yourself. Yeah, I mean, you know, our you know, my relationship and your relationship, you know, with our wives, it, it's it's definitely a a quote unquote normal. You know, like it's 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 balanced, it's fair. You know, sure we may have our our issues here and there, but you know, it's not. It's not like, um, I don't know if I should use this as an example. Um, well, I'll just say it like this. A relative of mine was dating this guy for years and years and years and years, and years for a long time, since like high school. Anyway, he, he, he controlled her, you know, he, he, he literally, um, uh, controlled like everything she did and she, she rebelled, you know, she, she broke up with him eventually. And, uh, you know, I, I think she's happy now with this other guy, so... Um, she's having a kid apparently, so yeah, it's interesting. So anyway, uh, <laughs> let's focus on the uh, the news. Um, so I thought there was a few other. Oh right, um, so Bandai Namco trademarked Rage Burst in Europe. So obviously, it's directly pertaining to um, God Eater Two Rage Burst, which is the PS4 and uh, PS Vita uh, kind of a enhanced version. Of God Eater 2. Um, it was interesting, the Bandai Namco Asia 
um, YouTube uploaded a trailer with English subtitles a couple days later. You know, people are going nuts because it, it. I mean, if it's if a trademark is filed, that's it's pretty indicative of of it happening. You know, that's it's usually how these these things work, especially with Japanese companies. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm glad they're uh, keeping it keeping a version on the Vita because for those of us who have not scraped together enough to buy a PS4. It's nice to have it on the Vita. Yeah, Bandai Namco, they're really taking some some risks in my opinion. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, if they if they grow into a bigger localization studio, I mean, they have the resources, you know, de they definitely do, but they seem to be pretty you know, a couple years ago, if if I would have told you that Bandai Namco would be localizing an insane crossover fighter with all the shonen characters like um uh, J Stars uh, uh, versus, um, you, you would have never believed me because you know that was back when we had the the, the maybe it was a bit longer like maybe five years ago the the Bandai that was crying about localizing the the Tales games you know yeah they don't cry about that now not after reading that special message uh, from Hideo Baba. In uh, the Tales of Zillia 2 guide, and they're saying, oh, we're so happy that they've sold so well over here. And and I know I posted a thing on there last year about how the sales for Zillia and Zillia 2 were through the roof and the pre-orders that they had. <clears throat> I mean, the series now is pretty much as big as Final Fantasy used to be. I'm, it is yeah. like the new Final Fantasy, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they, they've crafted this this series that they can keep making stuff for, you know, and it's pretty cool. I mean, I still have to give the more recent outings a chance. I just, you know, they're big, they're big RPGs, and I, it's a shame because I look at them and I'm like, man, there used to be a time when I would just devour these RPGs, you know. I would look for RPGs with 40, 60, 80 yep. plus hours, and I can't anymore. <laughs> hey, I'm still worried. I, I'm on. I'm just now getting on chapter ten of Zillia two, and I think there's like seventeen chapters. This weekend, I got some really good time in with it. I mean, it's. I'm. I'm really loving the game, but I'm hoping I can finish it before all this other stuff. Because you got Pillars of Eternity, Witcher three, Final Fantasy zero. Um, uh, what else? You got Tales of Asteria, which is supposed to be coming out. So there's oh, yeah. just so much stuff, and scale yeah. bound. Yeah, oh, that 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 looks awesome. Um, mm, mm, mm. And one thing I wanted to say about God Eater to keep it on subject here, I never played the first one for the PSP, and after seeing videos of it on YouTube, I wish I had. I really wish I hadn't missed that game. So when this one comes out, I'll definitely be getting it, one way or another. Yeah, one of our writers who. Who might be coming back? I don't. I'm not sure. He's he's really busy. Uh, Josh, he he's a huge fan of God Eater. Um, I think he I think he actually um, he's he goes to the site every day. You know, even though he's not writing for us right now. Um, I don't know if he listens to these. I, I think he does. I can't remember. But he um he was he was just like losing it when he saw the uh, the trademark news so that was pretty i'm you know i'm happy to see him being that happy i mean i'm i'm happy too you know we all are it's a happy time to be a gamer regardless of what people say there's just so much good stuff coming out especially for people who loved uh japanese games yeah and the sad thing is you get these people who sit there you know these armchair warriors and they they scream about how uh, how gaming is. Uh, I'm trying to think of the the phrasing they usually use. They they sit there and they say, "Oh, you know, the the, 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 the games they they just they just they, they focus on this this one type of person." And I'm like, "What? You know, like oh, just the, the the basement uh, the, the the males with their their obsession with violence and and, and breasts." Vaginas. And I'm like, um, <laughs> I love that voice. I'm like, I'm pretty sure, you know, um, you know, it's it. There's a huge misconception there because, you know, to me, the basement nerd was always, you know, the guy. This is me here. Like that was always the the stereotype, you know, like the the D and D player, etc. 
the uh, the, the gamer to me was never th- that kind of thing. You know, the gamer to me is just somebody who is an avid gaming enthusiast. You know, that's, that's you know the truth is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just say right now that stereotype has never really existed. I was playing D and D in the late '80s mo- through most of the '90s. I was a hardcore gamer. I moved out of my parents' house by the time I was 23. I used to have dozens of friends, most of which unfortunately have moved by now. But I can ca- tell you, of all the people I knew, both offline and on, I've never known any quote-unquote basement-dwelling, bearded, virgin nerds. So this stereotype that gets thrown around about gamers is complete and utter bullshit, and I just wish it would get dropped already. Because if you were to take everyone who identifies as a as a gamer or a Dungeons and Dragons player or any of those uh, stere- any of those people who are victimized by that stereotype, you pull them all together. I bet you less than one percent will be a bunch of thirty-year-old bearded guys living in their mother's basement. And that stereotype like needs Christian? to die. You know, the thing about Christian is, and I, I, I could probably, I could talk about him for months, but honestly, he's autistic. He's autistic, so technically, I mean, that's a, that's a horse of a different color. It, he's not like you or me or your average gamer. He's, he's vandalizing uh, stores because Sonic has the wrong color arms. I mean, just think about that. We're not dealing mm. with someone who, he should be on medication. I, I, I. I really, I don't want to get into this subject, but I, I think it's almost criminal that his parents never put him on medication or never took him to a psychiatrist or he should be in a group home or something. He, there's so much damage has been done to him. I don't know if they can even reverse it at this point. But that, that's, he, yes, he is a basement dweller, but that doesn't count because he has a mental disability. Yeah, that was, that was out of line. That was just, uh, I don't know why he just popped into my head. Um, no. I mean, I was it's watching. It's not really the, out of line. I get what you were saying. <laughs> I mean, I, I was watching the um, apparently the 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 writers of the Sonic Boom cartoon uh, wrote in the the Knuckles menu glitch. Like they they literally said, "Hey, look, uh, you can't complain about it anymore because it's now canon in the in the show." You know, it was, it was just a, it was like a really corny joke, but I was like, "Ha ha ha ha," you know, that I thought of. Chris Chan and freaking out of her the arms, so so there you go. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so two more localization bits of news. Uh, Fire Emblem IF, if whatever I don't know how you pronounce it, um, was listed on a Nintendo of Australia newsletter, um, with a uh, to be uh, confirmed, um, like caption. So. That clearly means you know Nintendo is obviously already ramping up you know localization for it. So I mean it makes sense. Awakening, you know, critically acclaimed, sold probably a bajillion copies. So it makes sense. And the same thing with uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, over on their Twitter, the uh, producer confirmed that they're already um, uh, localizing the game. Um, alongside the development being finished. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think with Nintendo, uh, this is just me uh, rumor-mongering some things I've heard, things I believe, but I think with Nintendo and Xenoblade, they're trying, they're going to try to make this their series, like it's going to be like their new Metroid or their new Mario Brothers. This is going to be their series. I think they're going to um, really hype this up, and you're probably going to see a new Xenoblade like every two or three years. <laughs> it, hmm. it wouldn't shock me, especially with them remaking the first one for the new three for the uh, new 3DS. I just think that, and maybe it's wishful thinking on my part, but Nintendo may finally be getting the uh, the idea that hey, RPG players actually exist, and we do want games even on our Wii. So maybe to play Kados and to finally jump in the the RPG pond, they might say, "Hey, why don't we, you know, put our resources behind Xenoblade, make it a Nintendo franchise, and then, you know, sequel the hell out of it." Which, by the way, I don't mind. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm always, you know, of the, the volition that, you know, the more RPGs, the better. I mean, I've always loved RPGs. Um, and uh, Well, at one time, you got to figure Dragon Warrior slash Dragon Quest was Nintendo's, uh, not really their franchise, but it was seen as their franchise because it was only on the Nintendo and the Super Famicom. And then when it jumped to the PlayStation, uh, starting with uh, Dragon Quest Seven, you know, it's like, it's to me, it seemed like Nintendo got bitter about the whole RPG thing and said, fuck it, we're not going to pay attention to the genre anymore. And really, in my opinion, they didn't. Not until Xenoblade. And Xenoblade got so hyped, and it was a good game, and it's so sought after, that now they see what went wrong and I think they're going to make Xenoblade like their new Dragon Quest. It's going to be like that that perennial RPG franchise. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's going to I mean the game looks incredible. Um I'm probably going to be buying a Wii U just for that game. Um I know. I hate to say it, but I might have to as well. Then I have to explain to the wife why I'm buying another system. She'll say, I bought you an Xbox One. Why do you need that? Yeah, it's the same with, uh, you know, with my wife. I <laughs> have to, um, I mean, ultimately, um, I need to figure out, uh, you know, how, um, how we can, we can do this with, um, you know, if I buy a piece of hardware for, for Niche Gamer, you know, that if, say, I don't have time to review something and we need to get, say, Xenoblade reviewed, and I'm like, hey, here, take the Wii U and Xenoblade, go review it, and, you know, I'll give it to somebody who, you know, if, so, if they don't have a Wii U. Um, I mean, ultimately, I want to have at least one of every console just for the site, so just in case there's somebody who doesn't have one particular console, then, you know, there's no worry anymore. Um, they'll still have to come to my place and get it, but, you know, it's, that's the, you know, the goal. Same thing with the recording equipment, um, so. Alrighty, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, more Nintendo news, um, so Pocket Tournament, um, had a, had a really cool uh, a bunch of news uh, revealed. So, for those who don't know, Pocket Tournament is the Bandai Namco developed uh, Pokemon fighting game. So, it's pretty insane. I'm really excited for it. It's still only coming to Japanese arcades. It's not confirmed for Wii U. It's It's got to be, you know, it's going to be coming at some point. But anyway, um, so the first bit of news that came out, Gardevoir, Pikachu, and Suicune... We're all confirmed for Pokemon Tournament. That's pretty cool. Um, and then the second bit that was probably the most interesting, it doesn't have a traditional arcade cabinet with, with the big buttons and the joystick. It's got a fucking controller. Like a legit, you know, corded controller that looks, you know, it's, 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 it's right now the prototype is meant to look like the, the, uh, the Famicom or the NES controller, so... Um, so that's interesting. Probably because, probably because most of the people who, and I'm, I'm imagining this is trying to horn in on the Smash Brothers crowd, but most of those folks are what playing on a classic controller. So maybe that's why they figure they're used to it. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> um. It's definitely. I mean. It, it looked incredible with the the footage. Um, I'm really hoping they upload um, high def footage soon. Um, and then there's also the final bit of news. Um, the gameplay itself confirmed that there's support there's support Pokemon that you can call in. They'll do like a move. Um, there's power up abilities among other things. That whole article, the um, the uh, support Pokemon, etc. It's actually it's a breakdown of all the stuff that happened in the video where most of the the most important bits of gameplay and stuff that I, that I noticed. So, so check that out. Um, so if you if you go and, and you know if if you have if you really didn't follow the stream or if you don't have time, that breaks down what we know so far from the gameplay. Um, you know, it's not a it's not a traditional uh, two point two uh, two D fighter, two point five D fighter. It kind of behaves in like a two phase mode it's it's really interesting i think they i think they got something unique there so 
Let me see. Uh, so here's a whole bunch of um. <laughs> Actually, uh, let me see. There's a bunch of stuff that I know Carl's going to talk about a lot. Uh, we'll do those after the Clive article. Uh, actually, we'll do Clive and Strafe. So I wanted to give some shout-outs to these two games. So Clive um, is up on... Um, let me get the article real quick. I thought this looked really cool. Um, it just instantly made me think of, you know... Uh, my childhood with the platformers and stuff. It's a very colorful uh, platforming game, and it, it it actually looks and 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 it, it at least it it looks like it behaves you know like like the the the, the platformers of old um, did you know. Um, I think my Wi-Fi is bottoming out. Let me see. I will say that the I do like the look of it. I I've always lamented the fact that there's never been very many uh, platformers on the PC, at least original ones that weren't ports. And even when you do see original ones, like say uh, Braid or Trine, they're not like um, they're not really 3D. They're they're 2D, and they're just meant to be like old school retro style yeah. platformers. I kind of miss the old like Mario 64 uh, Banjo and Kazooie style platformers from the N64 era. That's what I would like to see more of. So this is something I'm, I'm going to be keeping an eye on too. Yeah, I I, I actually got an email from the developer, um, you know, really cool guy, um, who basically has done like 80% of the the stuff behind the game. Um, you know, Rob Was, um, really cool dude, and. Uh, I'm probably gonna bug him to do an interview, um, and as soon as he has like a playable demo, he's gonna give it to us. So you know, we'll be doing some some video streaming of that. Um, I think it looks really cool. It's got a lot of character, and yeah, I, I miss those platformers too. And I, I um, I think they can do really well on PC. Like I, I totally agree, and I, I think um, I think this cop out. It's an untapped market. Yeah, man. Like I, I think this cop out of of 2D platformers, you know, whether they're pixelated or not, I'm kind of getting tired of it, to be honest. Yeah, I don't really like the, the uh, just being retro for retro's sake. I know people will probably jump on me for saying that, but I, I used to say this with Loon a lot, and it seems like they're just being retro just to be retro, not like they have to be. I want to see something like this that actually looks like a modern take on a classic genre. This I love. Yeah, and even with the, the geometry, the polygons and stuff, and the character designs and the character models and the colors, it looks like something you would see back on the N64 or the PS1. But but it but it, it runs fluidly. It, it looks really cool. Um, here, I'm going to play the trailer real quick. Yeah, it has the jagged polygons, which, which are nice. Here's the music. <laughs> it's even got, like, kind of Banjo-Kazooie-esque music, you know? Yeah, I was just going to say that that does sound like it could have been on the N64. No, I like that, though. That's cool. Right? Yeah. It's, um... I mean, it, it's it's looking like it's, it's running really smoothly, too. I think, is this 60 frames? Nah. Um... So, yeah, that, I mean, that that's... It, it, it warms the cockles of my heart, you know, my... My uh, late, late now, you know what my art. favorite platformer of all time is? What's up? Jump, jumping Flash, Jumping Flash One and mm. Two. I love those games. You ever play them? I, you know, yeah, you should if you haven't. I can't remember. PS One. I I could have sworn I have. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know, now it's got me thinking. Um, what my favorite platformers were back in the day. I mean, there was obviously. Super Mario 64, I mean, what, what can top that? I mean, that's... But, I mean, there was Spyro, which I fucking adored. I loved Spyro so, so, so much. I hate I hate what it's become. You know, I think it's it kind of makes me sad. Um, it's just sad, you know, not angry. Just I just look at it, and I'm like, oh, uh, that's Spyro now, huh? I remember that uh, Ghost and Goblins, or Ghouls and Ghosts, they made one for the... Um... The PS2 that I really liked, where you had to save the princesses. 
in oh, each. I know yeah. it's so cliche, right? You yeah, and you actually had your sword in that one. It was really neat. I love that game. Yeah, that one it was, was a blue really bottom. I always remember. It was a blue bottom PS2 disc, and I had so much, pro so many problems trying to get it to work on my PS2. The wife came to say hi. Hello. Oh. Carl says hi. Hi. And the the listeners will be listening too, so. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, Lewis, uh, calm down. He's actually he seems pretty chill now. <laughs> um. She put in uh, the pizza for me. I I love my wife. Um, so, um, see, I, I think Spyro, um, it's probably my, well, huh, I'm trying to think, because I, I know, obviously, Crash was incredible as well, and then, you know, later on, Jack, from my non dog um, Um, so moving on, um, so here's a bunch of uh, uh, computer, actually I forgot to mention Strafe. <laughs> so Strafe is up on Kickstarter, um, insane looking, uh, violent, you know, 90s-esque, um, uh, you know, first person shooter. The trailer itself, you have to go watch it if you haven't, it's, it's insane. Um, so, I mean, I... I I'm definitely interested, you know. Um, yeah, it looks like I like the the well, the monitor that he's using in that um, in that trailer is almost exactly like the monitor I had back in oh like 1996. You get those flat beige, ugly looking CRTs that uh, make that hissing noise when you turn them on. Oh <laughs> God, those were the days. I had a 13 inch CRT monitor, so damn big I could barely lift it up the stairs and of course I wasn't spazzing out and had foam coming out of my mouth like this dude but yeah that's 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 pretty much uh, how my how my 90s were right there yeah I, I remember man I, I um it was funny I remember I used to have an old monitor like that and then I upgraded to a um to a slightly bigger but much larger and heavier um monitor that came with um this compact Prezario, <laughs> and this fucker was so heavy, and of course it had the DDoS button too, and um, I remember um, I, I didn't have a concept of that some electronics might not be electronically shielded back then, so I had speakers like that were external, like right next to it, and then it kept making it change colors, and I'm like, all right, and I'm, those are some stupid kids, so I'm like, what the fuck is I keeping DDoS and a MIG go away, but I, I didn't like think to like research why that was happening at the time you know so so there you go I was a dumb kid just blaring my speakers my giant CRT um <laughs> so that looks cool go check out <laughs> go check out Strafe <laughs> uh, that's, that's that's what our that's what our childhood was like you know our our adolescent years was like so you know for all you youngins out there who grew up with the the PS2 and then, God, it's crazy to think about it. The PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and stuff. That's what it used to be like, you know. I, I think you... It's funny, too, because I can't believe that there's an entire generation of gamers out there who, for them, uh, nostalgic retro feelings are <laughs> come from the PS1 or PS2. It's like, damn, really? No, not that that's a bad thing. You know, but it's just funny because for me, it's like I can remember a time when I'm load when there wasn't even a uh, a graphical user interface to our machines. <laughs> now yeah. it's like everything has a GUI. I it, I watch those videos where they um, they take uh, teenagers and show them old technology, like they were showing them an Atari, and they didn't even know how to work the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, if it doesn't have a user interface, the kids can't use it. 
It's hilarious. I mean, I, I remember playing games off VHS tapes, you know, and to, to some people that sounds like fucking sorcery, you know. Um, you mean like the Action Max? Or yeah. do you mean like, I, I know my computer, uh, not my Commodore 64 because I didn't have the uh, cassette uh, deck for that, but my, my Atom, my Atom computer, I had the cassette tapes. <laughs> and they would always have those warnings that said, don't put this inside of an actual cassette player. So, you know, me being the paranoid OCD kid I was, I was like, oh my God, I, I can't, because I was always curious. I'm like, what would happen if I did <laughs> put it in there? And I never did. It wasn't until I had a Turbo Graphics, which was my first CD-based game system, and I was like, you know, fuck this. I'm going to see what happens if I put a Turbo Graphics game in my CD player. And it, and it was um, Cosmic Fantasy 2. And they had a message that played at the beginning. It says, warning, warning, take this out of your CD player or kiss your speakers goodbye. Well, and there was a big explosion <laughs> sound. Yes, really. Oh my god. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. Um, actually, hold on, let me go grab the pizza real quick. Um, I'll be like two minutes. Let me, um, I don't know if I should, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let it keep running. Um, I'll, I'll well, be right back. I could regale people with the story of Cosmic Fantasy 2. I don't know, most people might not know the game. It came out for the Turbo Graphics. was part of a... I think there were four of them, all told, in Japan. I'm not sure when they stopped making them. But it was brought to America by way of one of my idols, Mr. Victor Ireland, who was the head of working designs. Uh, people who had a Saturn might remember the guy. Uh, I think it was red-haired guy, kind of chubby, sort of like the console version of Gabe Newell. <laughs> I always loved the dude. I used to go to his website way back in the day, and he was famous for uh, mouthing off a lot on his website. And he was a really big anti-PC guy. And I'll never forget, and I feel bad about it to this day, I once got into an argument with him about uh, Half-Life. I think it had to have been like late 1998, and Half-Life came out, and I was one of the regulars on the board, and I was like, oh, Half-Life is so awesome, and, you know, it's a great game, it's one of my all-time favorites now, and I remember Victor Ireland going off and being like, Half-Life is a game for blockheads, it's stupid, there's no, there's no intellectual reasoning, it's, it's got to be the most shallow thing that I've ever played, <laughs> and I, I remember being banned from the board from that, if not banned, at least I know I never came back. <laughs> But I, I still love Victor Ireland. I just remember that story. He's a good guy, and I always wondered what happened to him because I've never seen him in um, in the gaming sphere since. Every once in a while, you see his name pop up somewhere, but you never... He's, like, never involved in anything. I think he was partly responsible for a translation to one of these games that came out not long ago. Damned if I can remember what it was. But I do know uh, he's still out there. He's just not as visible. It's a shame, too, because I always liked the guy. I might not always agree with him, but he was extremely outspoken. And he was a, a man who really loved gaming. And I would love to know what he thinks about this whole controversy now of censorship and Japanese games. Because Victor Ireland was very very uh, strongly opposed to censorship. If you read the little notes that he would put in the games that he translated, he would always talk about that. And I do know that he was a huge fan of Japanese RPGs, so it would be interesting to see what he thinks about all this. I know he's out there somewhere, so if anyone out there listening knows where Victor Ireland is or what happened to him, get back to me. Hey, maybe we can do an interview. Of course, Brandon's not here to answer me, <laughs> but I, I would love to see that. An interview with Victor Ireland. That would be something. Because I know he's out there somewhere. I don't think he has a Twitter. I'm looking, but I don't see anything. Maybe, maybe later I'll have to run an internet search on the guy. I was a, a religious supporter of his games, too. Every single game they made, I, I bought. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, that would have been the last game of his that I bought before Working Designs was no longer a company. I think that was Growlancer for the PS2. <clears throat> came with all those nice little extras. I think it came with a um I think it came with a pendant or a locket or something. I probably have it around here somewhere. Uh, unless the wife probably put it in storage because she doesn't like me to have all these game boxes laying around. I think Brandon would be proud I just rambled on about nonsense stuff for three minutes while he was getting his pizza. It also helps that it's extremely late, and I'm probably going to be going to bed after this because I have to wake up at 5 in the morning to go to class. Okay. I tried to fill the, uh, the emptiness with a small rant, but, uh, I don't know, I couldn't keep it. That's cool, I, I can edit it out. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting that. She's like, I put it in the pizza for you, and I was like, oh, okay. I kind of wanted to avoid eating on the podcast, because people get pissed off about that. Um, well, it's really fucking hot anyway, so let me let it cool off. So, hey, <laughs> I'm back. So, uh, so the last bits of news, um, it's actually... There's actually quite a few uh, really exciting things. So, Brian Fargo announces uh, The Bar's Tale 4. Um, so that's pretty awesome. So, um, I Yeah, that was speculated for a while, too. I mean, people kept... Because uh, it didn't, wasn't there news that broke, like, maybe a month ago that he uh, registered the, uh, the name? Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I remember hearing about, about that. Because... <clears throat> uh, there was another game. Everything's a blur now. <laughs> He's working on two games now, isn't he? Because he has Bard's Tale 4 and something else I can't remember. I thought, uh, aren't, isn't it In Exile working on um, the spiritual su- successor to um, Planescape? To, uh, to Torment, whatever. Oh, yeah, called. yeah, they have that too. That should be coming out this year, I believe. Uh, I, I always hear people praise Torment so much. But then I'm like, I'm like, can my computer even run it? Like, it sounds hilarious, but if it's that old of a game, you usually have to run it. Oh, it can run it. It's It runs on the same engine that uh, Baldur's Gate did. Torment's good if you, if you... Let me put it this way. It's like a visual novel with some minor combat. One thing that I didn't like about that game is that <clears throat> in the first half, you're basically never fighting. You very rarely fight. There's no real character growth stat-wise. It's all um, dialogue. And then, towards the end of the game, it's nothing but non-stop combat with very little dialogue. It's a game that's praised, and I understand why, but I just wish that you know, people could admit that failing of the game. It should have been more evened out. It's, it's very lopsided. I don't know if that makes sense, but people no, who played it will know what I'm talking about. That does. Um... The Bard's Tale 2, this is good. One thing I uh, heard him mention, I, I don't know if you if you got it in this, um, I think I posted it in the comments below, but he's trying a new type of, um, well actually not new type, it's sort of like how the old game is used to be, where both your party and the enemy party attack at the same time. So you can't say, oh, the enemy hit my dude and he only has one hit point left, let me cast heal. You might have, like, all your hit points, and then both sides go at once, and then your guy dies. It's not like you can stop the the fight in the middle and go and heal. So you have to kind of uh, strategize in such a way that, you know, you... Try to ex- you try to predict what's going to happen and expect the worst and try to um, allow room for it in your strategy. It, it sounds more complex than it is, but I like what he's doing with it. Hmm. It does sound cool, though. Um, let me see. Uh, so there's three more. I could have sworn. Oh, right, right. Um, so, uh, Don't Nod. I'm not, I never know how to pronounce it. I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Don't Nod Entertainment. The people who made a, 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 a Remember Me. And um, 
more recently, Life is Strange, which is coming out, um, revealed a completely new game. It's a PC horror RPG called Vampire, um, or Vampire, I guess. It, people were saying that it's it's meant to be the, the English version, which um, should have the E uh, on the end of it, but for some reason they went with the, the I don't know, the Germanic or Slavic uh, spelling of it without the E. Um, sounds pretty cool, actually, in my opinion. It's... Uh, you know, it's not it's not episodic as far as we know, um, and uh, I doubt it will be. European companies don't really do that. I one thing I do uh, want to mention though with Vampire and uh, with the other one, uh, Mars Warlog people are putting out that uh, Technomancer. <clears throat> I noticed that Focus Home Interactive is like the new Joe Wood. I mean, they have become like the, the top number one. Uh, European RPG publisher. <laughs> it's like every single major European CRPG I've seen has been published by Focus Home Interactive, which is cool. But it's it's neat to see them rising up and like being that company, because that must mean they they definitely have a lot of money and they're devoted to it. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's it, it's interesting, and you know, you, you mentioned the next bit of news, um, Mars. Uh, the Mars Wars uh, Mor- Mars Warlogs developer announcing a uh, Technomancer, which is another RPG. That's that's really cool. Um, I'm really excited for both games, actually. Yeah, Mars Warlogs is one of those games that's sitting inside of my uh, my pile. It's <laughs> it's in my backlog, and one of these days I'm actually going to play it. I feel bad because it it's it seems to be one of those RPGs that. You either really, really like it, or people really, really hate it. And I, I love games like that because they're they always end up being games that grow close that uh, I grow very fond of. Yeah, man. Um, I, I'm actually the same way. Like, um, near, I fucking love near, but it's a very polarizing uh, RPG. You know, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of critics don't like it, but um. You know, myself and a lot of other people just fucking love that game. So. Yeah, and you know, I wish I hadn't passed up on that because the reviews for it were so bad and everybody told me it was bad, so I never got it. I had one friend who I trusted at the time, and he was like, oh, don't get it, it's just nothing but fishing. I'm fishing all the time, I hate fishing. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, and I'm not going to bother with it. I hated fishing in Wind Waker, so I'm not going to put up with it again. So, but now I feel bad because I really would love to have played it. I mean, to put it into perspective, I remember fishing like once. That's like the only time you have to fish, um, and then the rest you can just you can just progress with the story, and the story is pretty incredible. Um, so, um, last bit of news. At least I think it's the last. Yeah. Um, an Ultima Underworld spiritual spiritual successor is officially official. Um, it's called uh, Underworld Ascendant, right? Um, it's coming to Kickstarter on February fourth. So. Yeah, and I think Warren Spector is involved in this too, isn't he? Really? Yeah, I thought I read somewhere. You know, a lot of the stuff I read is just bullshit. <laughs> I could have sworn I, I read somewhere that Spectre is involved. It'd be cool, though. I mean, <clears throat> the thing about Ultima Underworld, it's one of those games that old farts <laughs> still... Every once in a while, you'll reinstall it. Of course, now it's easy with the uh, with DOSBox and good old, good old games having a version up. But it's one of those games you keep going back to, and you're like, damn, they just can't make them like this anymore. Now, Arx Fatalis was supposed to be the modern Ultima Underworld. Unless somebody can prove otherwise, I remember hearing that the designers originally were going to make an Ultima Underworld 3. And when the uh, licensing fell through and they couldn't get the rights, they just renamed the game to Arx Fatalis. And Arx Fatalis really was supposed to be the next Ultima Underworld. Because if you play it, a lot of the features in like you know baking stuff and you know you have faction play underground vast underground kingdom a lot of it was ripped right out of ultima underworld 
So if anyone's listening to this and they're like, man, I'd love to play that game, go and play Arx Vitalis. I think you might be able to get it on Steam. It's probably like, what, four ninety nine, some cheap game. Go and get <laughs> it. I highly recommend it. I mean, even with the way you wind up your attacks, because in Ultima Underworld, you, you had to, like, wind up your your weapon. Or the same thing in Thief and System Shock 2, but you'd hold down the mouse button, and your guy would, like, wind up the the melee attack, and you'd see the little jewel on the screen get darker and darker, and as it gets darker and he winds back more, if you release it, your attack will be stronger. It might not Ooh. seem like something very complex, but for the time, that was pretty neat. I remember um, small um, like nuances like that being a bigger deal, you know, back then. And I think it, I think it's a shame because you know, kids, kids these days, if they, if they, they grow up with with all this, um, these games that are that are so complex, and um, I think you just can't appreciate things that much any, you know, anymore. If you, if you didn't at, at least play the older games, you know. Um, and and most especially if, if you grew up with them where you know at a time you know uh you know arx fatalis or or what have you that was the cutting edge you know you're like oh what are they gonna do next you know and and <laughs> and you know if you saw new stuff you'd be like oh that's pretty cool yeah and i think now the new innovations are mainly based on uh visuals or how how much how far you can mod the game yeah. it's it's just not the same anymore i hate to be that that old man screaming for the kids to get off his lawn but that's that's the way it feels sometimes no i i, I agree and i think one of the the main pillars that niche gamer kind of uh holds up or you know, stands atop or whatever is is innovation through gameplay you know is, is to have more unique gameplay experiences and, and a lot of people don't don't fully appreciate that or, or really talk about that you know like you pe- people love these days to uh to praise you know innovative storytelling or or you know more inclusive storytelling or characters or character development and i mean that's fine you know that's fine to have more inclusive stuff but to me as, as a gamer you know to me you know the quote unquote game you know the game is about quote unquote fun you know, and and that fun is the gameplay. You know, is how the game plays, and that to me, it's it could be a lot of stuff. I mean, it could be a puzzle game, it could be an RPG, a fighting game, racing game, but you know, does it have something that makes it stand out? You know, um, you know like Burnout. Uh, what made those games stand out was the the completely insane crashing. Um, uh, mechanics, you know, like you would smash into shit, and it would like zoom in, and, like, and it would slow down, and you see your car crunching and stuff, and that that's really cool. It, to me, it still is to this day. You know, I, I still can't get over it. Um, I know some people bitch about, ah, I'm, not, I'm so tired of, you know, I'm like, you know, it's, it's whatever. Like that's that's part of burnout. Um, I love the burnout games because of that, you know. So that that made burnout stand out to me because. What else can racing games do? <laughs> you know, like I don't know. I think my cat's chasing a mouse. I just saw my oh, cat, shit. I just saw my cat like run, like just bolt into the other room. That's funny. Um. Anyway, um. So topic of the week. Um. We talked for too long, so <laughs> I wish we. We need to be better with our time management. Um, so Microsoft had their Windows 10 keynote. Um, if you didn't follow it, we covered all the relevant stuff you know, that we can that we can talk about on the website. Um, yeah, I think there was some 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 cool stuff there. You know, I know there's a lot of hate. A lot of people still just fucking hate Microsoft. They hate Xbox. You know, you, that's I understand why. You know, I was right there with you with the the DRM and all that stuff. I you know it's but. You know they 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 are making steps toward you know being better, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be a, be a Microsoft shill. I'm just trying to you know, clear the air before we we, t- we talk about the keynote. Um, no, and I agree with you too. I <laughs> well, first of all, let me get this out of the way. 
I, I'm going to echo the sentiment by uh, one of our fans below the article and what he said in that I really wish Microsoft would stop naming things after Halo. I mean, I get it. Their, their Siri version is called Cortana. Now their new Internet Explorer browser is going to be called Spartan. I get it. <laughs> you made Halo. It's funny. But please stop. <laughs> if they call their next operating system, you know, forward unto dawn, then we have a problem. <laughs> but that being said, that being said, I do like, I mean, they, they are trying. You, they're having the free, uh, like I have a laptop that has Windows 8, so naturally I'll get a free upgrade, which I think is really cool. That's a nice, nice olive branch. <clears throat> and uh, what I've seen so far, Windows 10 looks really nice. They're, they're actually giving you a real desktop environment this time, which is nice. Um, Battletoads could probably do without that, but I'll let you touch on it. I don't want to go ahead. But anyway, I think I like what Microsoft's doing. I mean, there, there's really uh, they're really trying to reach out to people that they might have lost, and you know, they I always thought they were blowing smoke up people's rear ends about the we believe in PC gaming thing. But I don't know. I mean, with uh, what I've been hearing, like now they're going to do crossplay, and now they're going to let you stream your um, your Xbox One games onto your PC. I think that's pretty cool. You know, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, that's, that's meaningless. I don't care about that. But it's a step in the right direction. It shows they actually give a shit. I mean, um, I, I definitely agree. I think um, I think people don't re fully realize what these announcements mean. Um, I mean, obviously, these are announcements. They've shown tech demos. It's not actually running like, say, PlayStation Now is, um, which that exists. You can get it. You can play it. it you know, it functions um, I haven't really used it that much myself, um, but, you know, um, we'll break it down. Um, so I think the biggest news is probably, like Carl mentioned, was the, the Xbox One games being streamable to Windows 10. So alongside that, they also announced a cross-play between PC and Xbox One. That, that's a big deal. Um, and I think an even bigger deal is the fact that they're going to let you stream... Xbox One games to your piece to your Windows 10 PC. So, if you don't fully take that in, what they're trying to do is a very smart move, in my opinion. They're trying to supersede, a, like um, like you know your Steam or your good old games or whatever. They they're trying to instead, you know, say hey, if you got an Xbox One, you got this game, you can play it on your fucking PC. You know, whatever, just, just go do it. You can you can do it that way instead of instead of us creating our own uh, client, you know, like they tried doing with games was it uh, games with Windows, or whatever the fuck it was called. Um, I'm pretty sure that's dead at this point. Um, you know, they they tried, and it's I'm I'm almost positive that that program um, is dead, and you can see it with like um, uh, was it uh, Dark Souls was on that program and they actually migrated to steam so they officially are yeah, like it's still, the thing is it's still around but it doesn't do anything it actually still does exist uh, the same way that you know a dead dog on the side of the road is still a dog it just doesn't mm. do anything <laughs> bad <laughs> analogy but it is and i it, you know it was a big mistake for them because I think they expected PC gamers to be the same as console gamers, so they thought they could just do the same thing they do on console on the PC. Obviously, it didn't work. What I like now is I think they kind of see that, and now they understand that if you know you want to get PC gamers in on the action, you need to be you need to cater to them to some extent, and this this idea of streaming on there i mean that that's that shocked me when i saw when i saw that cuz unfortunately i saw it on another site before you posted it i was like damn i need to build a new pc and get windows 10 yeah i mean it's it's really exciting um i mean um that's something that sony is is definitely not going to do you know at least not for a long time I mean, for all we know, uh, PlayStation Now is 
basically going to be only on PlayStation devices and Android devices, um, and you know, of course the Sony TVs. So it's um it's interesting. Um, we'll move on to um so you see there should be yeah so there's some more software bits. Uh, Internet Explorer is officially being ditched that name. So the the, the new tentative uh, name for the browser is the Spartan browser. Um, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> you know, Ugh, Spartan browser, Jesus Christ. You know, um, I, I made a little addendum, um, rather a, a preface to, to that article saying, you know, whenever I get a new PC, you know, I, I boot up Internet Explorer to download an, another browser, and I always go, Ugh, Internet Explorer. You know, and, and I, I never really knew why I, I hate it so much because, you know, they have tried to improve it since um, IE6, I believe, was the, the awful one. Um, so they, they, they've made improvements, but it still has the, the IE name. People still know it as Internet Explorer. People still take a giant dump all over it. So, so they're just fucking just dropping that. You know, they're just leaving that behind. But you know what one of the problems with Internet Explorer is? Is uh, around the early 2000s when you had the move to... Um, how do I put this? Modding browsers. Everybody wanted to have a browser they could mod. They could have put plugins. They could make. Uh, they could tailor to their own tastes. Internet Explorer didn't do that. IE never really adopted that that mantra that say Firefox and Chrome did. That's why Firefox and Chrome became big. Because Chrome and Firefox, you can take them apart, rearrange them, put in plugins, you can download Grease Monkey, and do all kinds of crazy shit. But with IE, IE is just this, you know, staid, stagnant, stale web browser that just sits there and looks like something out of the 90s. They never really modernized it. Sorry, I was eating. I was trying to finish before you finished. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, and I don't really have anything. Look, I don't use Internet Explorer. I not to seem elitist and try to sound like some kind of uh, highfalutin hipster, but I haven't used uh, Internet Explorer since the late '90s. I got so tired of Internet Explorer that by '99 I got uh, Opera. I tried Opera. Used that for a couple years. And then uh, I got Firefox, when Firefox started to become big. And <clears throat> even though Firefox has been starting to get a little sluggish, and it's starting to get a little bogged down with all the features they've added, it's not as lean as it used to be, I like the fact that I can run Grease Monkey on it, and I can use all these plugins and change the way the web behaves. I mean, once you have Gre the Grease Monkey plugin, I don't know if anyone listening here uses it, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, uh, I remember about, what, four years ago when I first got it, and I found out you could download anything on any kind of media on the Internet, even if it wasn't actually downloadable like porn videos or YouTube videos or MP3s <laughs> that are playing in the background of a site. So I was like, oh my god, I can go to Pornhub and just like pfft, download all my videos. <laughs> See, I'm really... <clears throat> Somebody I know will will listen to this and say, hey, he's such a pervert. Come on, we all do it, so don't even start. Yeah, I, um... But yeah, I mean, that was a cool thing. Gr Grease Monkey's great like that because that's what... Internet Explorer doesn't do. Internet Explorer doesn't let you reach your hands into it and tailor the web to your own tastes. With Internet Explorer, you boot it up and a website's just a website. But with, say, Firefox or Chrome, I can do anything I want. I mean, there's a YouTube, there's a thing for Grease Monkey that totally changes YouTube. It gives it a, a, a black color so it's easier on the eyes. It doubles the size of the viewing window. It auto loads everything in the highest uh, f fidelity. It automatically downloads stuff locally and replays it from your hard drive instead of, instead of um, looking for it online. So, I mean, there's all these crazy things you can do that will alter the way the web works. And that's what people want nowadays. They want that extra level of control. People are a little bit too savvy. And yeah. I haven't 
heard much about Spartan, but if they want their next web browser to be a success, that's what they're going to have to do. And I think um, at first I was contemplating writing about it, and I'm like, eh, you know, it's it's more tech news, I don't know. But then you know, I thought, I'm like, we're a fucking website, so this is a new web browser, we should be talking about it, you know, so... So I said, you know, so I made the decision to talk about it, and I, I think the response was good. You know, I mean, aside from the name, um, I think people are are optimistic. You know, and um, the the fact that you can you can save um, pages, you know, to a uh, to a list you can view offline is pretty cool. And the uh, I think the the one of the coolest bits was the the fact that you can write. Like graffiti and shit on the web page and save it to your your uh, your your OneNote and then share it with people. So you can just find a page and just write down and draw dongs all over it and just send it to your friend and be like, "Hey, look, I gave you some notes." <laughs> just see the. Hey, I improved niche gamer. I put dongs all over the place. Yeah, I gave uh, Mika like a like a giant penis like just resting on her head. <laughs> I hope you like it. Mika is a futa now. And I'd be like, oh. Fruit and Nari. And I'd just be like, no! <laughs> Fucking just kill myself. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, that would be good because then Mika would be transsexual. Then she would be more appealing to SJWs. Ah, uh, see? We can appeal to both sides of the market. Hmm. But she can't have, like, one of the one of those giant throbbing cocks like the, the food is usually have. She has to have, like, a... <laughs> She has to have, like, a small, limp one, because, um... <laughs> no, that's horrible. That's worse than putting a big, <laughs> throbbing one. It's because, um, I'm pretty sure, biologically, if somebody is a literal hermaphrodite, only one of the sexual organs actually functions, um, and, uh, uh whatchamacallit, um, so, you know, so... To, to appeal to the SJWs, we have to be biologically uh, sound, you know, so so she has to have a little limp wiener. Um, or... <laughs> oh, I'm looking at I'm looking at her picture now on the top of the site, and I'm just... No, don't. Please don't say anything <laughs> bad about her. I, she's looking at me like, Carl, why are you talking bad about me? I mean, this reminds me of that... that, that re- when we had the Halloween design come out and I, I pulled for people's responses and you know everybody loved it but then there was like a small group of holdout crazies who were just fucking going nuts and I, I had like a an exchange with one of them um, and uh, and she said and I, I actually ha- I actually used the Halloween design for my wallpapers still um, I haven't felt like changing it I just plus I just I just love the design but anyway I said the way she's holding these controllers, it looks like she's she's like jerking off two cocks, and I, and my my, my response, I, I, <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, I I never thought that once. I I saw two controllers, you know, and she's holding them up, like you know, she's like she's she's like presenting them, like hey, check it out, you know, controllers, not like hey, I'm jerking off these controllers, like, oh, yeah, you know, I I I, did, I never once thought of that like once you know it, it was this fucking crazy sex shaming uh sjw who who saw that and just fucking went batshit nuts on twitter i swear to god the, the tweet's probably still there if you go into our thing it's from back in october you have to go digging but um you know it's sad because that's probably just her projecting it's i i don't want to say anything but my theory is I feel it's these undersexed people. They're just not getting enough. So every time they see something that's even the slightest bit, and I mean the slightest bit sexual or can be taken in a sexual way, they just rail against it. I agree. Um, <laughs> people in Gamergate were actually making a point of this, saying, you know, the the most progressive people um, on Twitter, you know, they, they're very hateful and stuff. There's so-called progressives that they're probably just projecting off of their own racism, you know, or bigotry, or sexism. So it makes total sense. It's 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 the same way that um, you know, you could say the um, you know, a judge is is secretly you know binge drinking in between uh, cases and you know, or or you know, every cop is a criminal, you know, stuff like that. So. 
it's like how I said on Twitter about last week I posted something a couple of people retweeted. I said, and this was true coming from the heart, I said, I only trust people who are perverts. <laughs> because honestly, perverted people are the coolest people on earth. Now, <clears throat> one cool thing about this whole controversy is I've added a lot of people to my friends list that I never knew before. And there's one person that I know of, this uh, Alexandra. I, he's a, I guess he's a guy who's transitioning to a woman. So he's really cool, or she's really cool. I don't know. I can't remember what the preferred pronoun is. I'm sorry if you're listening. But uh, he's extremely, 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 extremely perverted. And I just, I just love the tweets that, that come out of that. And it's why I say I only trust perverted people because I don't care if you're straight, if you're gay, if you're bi, if you're, you know, I don't care what you are. I don't care where you are on the spectrum. If you're really perverted, you're probably a cool person because it's those people that are comfortable with their sexuality and comfortable with expressing it that are the easiest to get along with, at least in my opinion, from what I've seen. Yeah, man, I, um... I've kind of gotten a a, repu- a reputation now for for just posting whatever I want, you know, on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I have some of my coworkers on Facebook, and they'll be like, "Oh, I saw your um, your post there," you know. And I'm like, "What? Which one?" You know, and they're like, "Oh, you know, the one about the penises and then the the breasts and stuff." And I'm like, "Which one?" <laughs> you know, and, and you know. It's just funny to see people's uh, reactions to it, um, and and I, I've always, you know, ever since I've been on the internet, I've always kind of felt like at some point I might make a living off of pornography in some shape or form. It just made sense to me, you know, because like I, I mean, I'll tell anybody, hey, I like pornography, you know, like I, I don't care what you think about me. Um, you know, porno- yeah, well, I mean, you don't even have to say that. You can just say you like the the human form, which I think we all do. And you just get these people that don't want to admit it to themselves. They're like, "Oh no, I'm I'm you know I'm a civilized human being. I don't look at naked people. That's horrible." Yeah, you do. And you think about it all the time too. Men and women, gay and straight, we all think about sex all the time, every day. So why would you then go here and say otherwise? Like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold myself back, and then I'm gonna point and wag my finger at those who, who are thinking about sex, you naughty boys. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, hmm, hmm. Well, we'll bring it back, and we'll finish up with with Microsoft, and then we'll close out. Um, so, um, we mentioned briefly that Cortana. Is now is going to be your your assistant in Windows 10. So she remember, I'm sure many of you maybe if you're too young and you didn't and, and then you're, you're lucky. The little fucking paper clip that popped up in Windows. Remember that guy? Clippy. Yeah, Clippy. <laughs> That's what she's going to be relegated to outside of the Halo games. I I don't really play them that often, so I don't know if she still is in the Halo games. If she still can. And, um. Yeah, she is. So okay. Well, well then you know. Then she'll. <laughs> so outside of her also being Microsoft's C- version of Siri, she's also going to be Microsoft's new Clippy. Um, so that's certainly interesting. Chief, Chief, remember to cl- remember to save that file. <laughs> you know, one, one of uh, in in the article, one of our fans was like, you know, this is kind of creepy, and most especially if it's saggy tits Cortana. <laughs> I was just dying, like I was laughing so. <laughs> so hard um and then finally one of the most interesting pieces of news is microsoft revealed their own vr headset called a hololens or microsoft hololens um they had a a minecraft tech demo because obviously they own minecraft now they're trying to capitalize upon that i think it looked cool you know i mean it's it's it it has the, the holographic technology built in you know, and it, it renders it separately from the external hardware. So, if say if you have the game that's you know that's built to have those visuals in it, um, it just sends the video signal to the headset, and the headset renders it in that holographic form. And then, bam, you and then you see it. Um, I, th- I I love tech like this. You know, I I really hope at some point we can get our hands on it. Um, if they have it at E3, they probably will. Um, and if if any of us can afford going. 
Um, you better believe we're going to fucking be trying it out, so. So that's cool. Um, so, um, before we close out, um, actually, I grabbed maybe a bit too many. These are the, this is our, our newer segment, Senpai Noticed You. So, <laughs> if you tweet at us, email us, um, you know, uh, if you comment on articles or whatever, um, these are all tweets, but I've grabbed article comments before too. I just didn't have time. I'm sorry. Um, you know, we'll we'll point we'll point it out. And be like, hey, you know, senpai noticed you because, uh, you know, you made us laugh or something. It's usually it, it's usually if I laugh, that's when <laughs> that's when I'll, I'll grab the uh, uh, the comments. So first up, it's a uh, wonder carp on Twitter. Uh, he nominated us for the Shorty Award in fan sites because they are real fans of niche gaming awesomeness. So that's awesome. Thanks, dude. Um, I I, resp- I wonder if we really will get nominated though, because I know they're they're pretty big awards on the web. <clears throat> we have to have a lot of people who have nominated us. Yeah, I don't know what the policy on that it is either. Like if I tweet about it, like hey, you know, vote for us. Maybe I will. Um. Um. So these next tweets are in relation to <laughs> uh, the Fahrenheit, um, uh, whatever the fuck it's called. They they butchered the name with the American release. It's it's David Cage's older game. Christ, it's whatever. It's the the weird game. Fahrenheit and uh, Indigo Prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Dandy Jack said that game was absolutely fucking retarded <laughs> I laughed at that and then uh, uh, Tim Co um, I forget his full name it's like Tim something it's, uh, this uh, cool Polish guy uh, he said that um, uh, pictured a split second before the game goes full anime in all caps <laughs> That was pretty funny. That's one of those games that people either really, really love or really, really hate. I've never played it, but a lot of people I know of on Steam, they talk very highly of it, so I might try it out, but Yeah, yeah, I mean I um I'm trying to remember if if I played Indigo or if I played uh the earlier game that they made, Omicron, the Omad Soul. I I know I still have a copy of Omicron it's fl- fucking sitting somewhere. Um the one with David Bowie in it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh man. How could you forget Ziggy Stardust? You shouldn't forget him. I know. I I love Bowie. Um, I I actually have all of his albums. Um, all, all the old ones. I I don't have his new one. I I've listened to it though. It's 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 it's. I, I like it. It's it's fun. Um, it sounds kind of like his older stuff. I mean, it might, I don't know. Um. This was in response to my my tweet, my jab at a uh, uh, magfest because of all the bullshit that I've been hearing down the vine through my sources um, about what's going on over there. You know, Arthur Chu or or the fuck his name is, um, those morons over there. Um, you know, and telling people that they need to get their weapons checked <laughs> when they have like a giant foam hammer and shit like that. It's like it's like it's insanity. You know, that, that that's what happens when you have. SJW is in power. That's like America and the world. Like I'll say this right now. That's what happens when you let these crazies, these SJWs, have actual power. That's what they do. They fucking throw it around and they they become even more crazy. You know, they. It's just insanity. Um, and I, I tweeted. You wouldn't need a you would you wouldn't need a weapon to take care of Arthur Chu. I could probably come in with a very hard uh, noodle that was maybe undercooked. And I think I could probably take him out with that. Just poke him. Ah, you're assaulting me. Yeah, and I'm talking like a penne, like a penne noodle. You know, just a little one. Oh yeah. <laughs> you might want to like, come here, fat boy. Oh, poof, just poke him right in the boob with it or something. You might want to uh, boil it a little bit so it gets like nice and nice and floppy and then wet and then just slap him on the face with it. <laughs> uh, oh, this is giving me ideas. Anyway, so the response to that was, uh, this is from uh, Cameron, uh, 8161, who's a pretty big fan of ours. Pretty So, awesome. Thank you, dude. 
Uh, he said, shit, for a decent con like that, I would have to try to get a Friday off so I could travel up from D.C. So, <clears throat> uh, I forgot to mention the, the jab at MAGFest was saying maybe we should finally start uh, Niche Gamer Con, you know. So, I can't say more. Um, there's something happening later this year <clears throat> that I can't quite announce yet that's going to be exciting. Um, I told the... Promise me this, if we ever get big enough to have our own con in the same way that, say, Penny Arcade does, I would like to see that happen, by the way. We have to have some kind of, uh, some kind of tournament or exhibition that involves only games with very large breasts. So, like, we could have uh, a dead or alive competition, but players are only allowed to pick, like, Vanessa or H Hitomi... <laughs> or Mary, characters that have really big breasts. I mean, um... <laughs> <laughs> that would be the official niche gamer uh, breast tournament. And whoever wins the tournament would get an Opie mouse pad. I mean, I think if we framed it right, it, it would get fun reactions out of people. Um, we could say... <laughs> framed it right! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Jesus. I didn't... Ah... Uh, uh... Uh, no, it's okay. It's don't worry. Uh, I'm tired too. For, um, I, I I actually I really like that idea. Um, we could call it the uh, the breast appreciation and awareness turn uh, event or something, and um. Yeah, and you know what? We could take donations for breast cancer. There you go. Yep. Bam. There, yep. There you Give go. Give out pink ribbons. Yep. There you go. And uh, and then people can't call it sexist because we are legitimately appreciating the female form and raising awareness of breast cancer at the same time so there you go porn does it all the time so there you go <laughs> just eat it yeah I, I used I, I know they used to have those little armbands that say I love boobies <laughs> yeah <laughs> I worked with a guy who I worked with a guy who had one and I was like where'd you get that and he showed me I'm like oh that's so awesome uh, <laughs> so uh this next tweet was in response to uh, the the news of, uh, of Indigo Prophecy, actually, as well. A fan was like, wait, huh? Wasn't it on PC already? Huh? And then, like, oh, dirt, I didn't read the article. And then uh, I think it was Demi responded on the Twitter saying, you know, read the article. And he was like, I did XD derp. So, <laughs> and this was uh, Chaz Dragoon, so he's a pretty cool guy. He's a uh, more recent fan of ours, but... Um, <clears throat> very active with uh, the tweets and stuff, so pretty cool. Thanks, dude. Um, and the final uh, piece from uh, Senpai Noticed You. Uh, so this was from the Killer Instinct article um, revealing um, Omen, and at the end was the tease for uh, Golem. <laughs> I had a pretty good laugh at this. This is from the unhel the unhelpful NPC, which is an awesome Twitter handle, by the way. That's a pretty awesome. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. <laughs> he uh, he said, "Excellent. Uh, I'll be looking forward to losing angrily to Omen." And did you see the broccoli man at the end? <laughs> Dude looks sick. <laughs> he does. He looks so derpy. After when I look at him again, he just looks so derpy. <laughs> Is there a picture of that? I need to see that. Um, I don't. We don't have one in the article, but you can skip to the end to see the the, the teaser for for uh, Golem. <laughs> oh man, this is funny. Well, anyway, um, I know my wife is getting antsy. Um, I think we we had a good show. You know, um, we're trying to have we're trying to have more fun with it. We're trying not to have to be too scripted. Um, I don't want to cut out the. The, the rambling uh, in the future I, I, I want to keep it in I, I want to try to to keep it relevant and or fun you know I think that's what makes these fun so um, and I, I promise the closeout won't be too long so um, Patreon is growing so thank you guys for that it's awesome um, we're, we're climbing towards 350 a month so that's that's incredible um, you guys are really really supporting us and, and I know I know we haven't we haven't been on top of um, everything. Like we're we're trying to iron out the kinks with the the Mika designs. Um, so I'm gonna send out a send out a message tonight. Um, 
with the the tentative designs and you guys can give me feedback and you know maybe we'll suggest new stuff and whatever and then we'll do the voting um i think the best way for us to do this would be we decide upon a design and then the design is is basically prepped up for the next month um and I still can't quite figure out how to do a calendar for it because the problem is the way that this artist does the, the designs, he makes kind of extravagant backgrounds or whatever, and it, it it's not too easy on the eyes to have just a, a basic calendar. I'd have to have like a big temple that would cover up you know the whole design. So I might even just scrap the idea of doing calendars. I really don't want to. Um, it's you know it's it's there's there's a bit too much on my plate still at this point so um so whatever we'll, we'll figure it out you know um so you know and that's that's part of you know I, I did the the january update for patreon where i talked about the money where the money was spent that's going to be every month now so the beginning of next month i'm going to do an update explaining where the money for um for january went. them in january it was talking about december so you know this coming update will be for january's money um so yeah, um, and we'll we'll describe you know we'll go over that we'll go over where the money is going, um, and you know the money that we get goes right back into the website. So if you if you if you support us, you know it's not going to feed our mouths or pay our bills. It's going to the website. That's that's the only place it goes to. Um, you know, we we I may spend I may spend spend money on you know buying. Uh, a game, you know, for us to review or what have you, but that's that's going back into the website. So, you know, and we're gonna we're gonna disclose all of that. You know, that's all we're always gonna do. So please consider supporting us, even if it's a dollar. It's totally cool. Um, it, it means the world to me and the rest of the and the rest of the people here. So, so please consider it. Um, you know, tell your friends about us. You know, even if you can't, that's fine. You know, we're not gonna lock content behind a paywall. Um, you know, just tell your friends about us. You know, we're, I, th I think we have a pretty fun community at this point. And, um, and we started doing some Let's Plays, you know. We, we hit the, the video uh, content goal, so we're, we're trying to roll out video content. And I think the response has been pretty good, you know. Um, people seem to really like them. And I think the quality is pretty good as well, you know. I mean, it's high def, you know, and both uh, Chris and Carl were you know, are very knowledgeable about these games. So that's how we're trying to do it, you know. We're trying to be uh, as professional as we can, so... Um, yeah, I would like to do more of them. I, I... Sorry, I think I lost connection there for a bit. I, I really love doing that, and I think from now on, whenever I get a PC game, I'm going to make a video like that, anywhere from like 10, 20 minutes something to mm. just showcase the gameplay let people know what it's about cuz you can read a, a review and you know a review is nice to have but until you see the game running until you see how it plays and how to work it you you can't really get an idea for how good or bad it is i agree um and this is a you know just a I'm a point i want to make you know if you see the quality of of the video that Carl did um you know, it, it's hard for us to. How should I put this? It's it, it's hard to to especially for me and Carl because you know we have families. It, it's hard to validate the amount of time that we're putting into the site, unless we're actually personally um, taking some sort of salary. Um, especially in Carl's case because you know that stuff takes time. You gotta you know you have to you have to basically set up. You know what you're going to be playing, how long you're going to be playing, what part of the game you're going to be playing. You're you're going to you have to set up what you're going to talk about and stuff like that. So, it's you know it, it would it would behoove us if you if you guys supported us more and if I could actually pay people because at this point all the money is going into maintenance, the Mika designs, um, maybe a game here or there, and that's it. That's that's all we can afford right now. Um, so if if we make more money. Then I can throw money at people per video, you know, and per and per article, and we can have more content, you know, um, and you'd be seeing more videos like that from Carl, so and Chris and myself and 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 and, and whomever. So, um, so please just 
think about that, you know, and um, and and we we are trying, you know, to 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 do that regardless of how much money we're making. So, um, so anyway, um, final uh, notes. Um, I got an email back from a certain individual who is inadvertently <laughs> going to forever change the the face and the future of of Niche Gamer. So I can't say more than that. Um, Carl and the rest of the guys know um, it's gonna it, it's gonna sound like a lot of money when I when I can finally tell people how much it's costing and and you know and what it's for um, and I'm sure people will be will be upset and or angry that money is going towards that um, but just know that this move is gonna further solidify the name Niche Gamer and us as a as a community and as a name and as a website so to me this was inevitable you know um, I, I always wanted to, to, to make this move um, to make it happen um, and it's it's gonna cost a, chunk, a small chunk of money um, but you know it's it's gonna come and it's gonna go and then uh, and then we're gonna be basking in, in the glory of uh, <laughs> Of a, of a of a new a new avenue, so don't say it, don't say it. Ah, oh, I really really want to say it. Um, hmm. I know, I know. Well, look, I mean, <clears throat> look how far you've come so far. I, I imagine how far we're gonna be this time in 2016 and 2017. You know, as I've told you before privately, and I'll say it here now. The internet needs sites like ours, not just ours, there's other sites that have come up too that are pretty big, and they need uh, a fresh new take on things because the old guard is corrupt. Not only, you know, and not, not only corrupt, but they've kind of grown um, complacent. Oh, yeah. And as much as I, there are some sites I still follow that are still on my RSS. And, and I like them. I'm just going to say I like Silicon Era. I think they're a good site. I go to them a lot, as I always have, for a lot of my Japanese stuff. A lot of JRPG coverage gets put on there first before it filters down on the other sites. But at the same time, it's just... I don't know if it's because they haven't changed much in all the years, and I've just been going there for so long, but it just... if it, it feels like an old, worn-out pair of shoes if that makes sense, and you just want to go and buy a new, <laughs> a shiny new pair. Yeah. I'm the king of bad analogies, by the way. But, you know, you need a you need a, a nice, fresh voice, and I feel that's what we have here, and that's why I joined you, and that's why I like this site, because it's one of those few fresh new voices that are out there making waves, and I, I think we do need a new group to replace the old group. Every once in a while, you need to buy a new pair of shoes. The old will start to stink. No, I, I agree. And to, you know, to, um, you know, to finish up, to finish it up, I, I, I totally agree. I think, um, you know, I, I respect Silicon Era. I, I, <clears throat> I might make jokes, um, you know, and I, I respect Gamatsu and all the other, the other sites that are, you know, they're competitors to us. Um, but, most of these sites that are just pure, uh, mostly if not pure news blogs, it's just not viable anymore. You know, gamers want more. Gamers want uh, like this, the podcast. Gamers want video content. Um, gamers want the the people who are who are covering their games. You know, basically cur curating the games to them. They want them to be more human. They want them to be more connected, more vo more vocal about things. And uh, and more relatable, you know. And, and and if all you are is a is a is a writer that regurgitates press releases and uh, you know and and Famitsu articles and uh, Dengeki articles, then I hate to say it, but you're going to start. I mean, I, I'm already seeing it. I, I I've seen lots of people who who have come to our site now instead, you know, because they. They, they see that that we're a voice here um, and, and they see that you know that we're passionate about this and, and the passion shines through you know above just 
I don't know how to de- how to delicately say it. But instead of just plain, you know, emotionless writing, you know, I mean, there's a difference between you know ed- editorializing a news article, and then you know, because I I don't quite agree with that either. But you know, we are passionate. And people see it, and people are coming to us now. So I know what you mean. I feel that. Uh... One of the, it's like one of the reasons why I tend to pick stories uh, that I know something more about than the layman. I will put something in there that that I know personally, or something that I've heard or I experienced that you're not probably going to see on another site. I like when I go to a website and say, you know, that website's uh, PC RPG fan has some kind of insight into this game that nobody else does and he mentions it in an article <clears throat> it's one thing just to say okay X game publisher has produced Y game it is due out on the 15th it is forty nine ninety nine. it is on Steam Early Access yada yada anybody can you know copy and paste and put that up there but if you say like oh this developer ten years ago made a game called Arx Vitalis uh, it was made it was a French game made by a small company you know and if you say something like that I can go wow that gives me a nice background to the story that's what I because let's be real a lot of the stories we have you're gonna see on 10 15 20 different websites but the difference between all those sites is who has the most background knowledge. I always hate to play this elitist role, but I always end up going back to it. But no, I, really, I that's the that's the gist of it. what I'm getting at is you want a site that has people that actually know what they're talking about. And all, all of us do. You and Demi and me, we all know our shit. So well, people look for that. I'll just mention this before we, we finally officially uh, <laughs> close off. I've actually seen um, articles run by our competitors where they they mention the bare minimum of the source material, and you know, and I I understand that they're making the assumption that all of their readers are on top of the majority of the 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 media you know whether you know in in the Japanese scene, but that's a problem because if you, if you Especially if it's if it's the the introductory article about a game, or a game adaptation for a series or a franchise, and I always make an effort to explain what the game and or source material is about, because if you don't, that's just disingenuous. Because then that means if the person isn't isn't you know motivated enough to go and Google about it, they're just going to be pissed off because they're going to be like, okay, a game about something that I don't know anything about. Eh? You know, and I think that's... <laughs> I don't want to say a crime, but it's it's, it's pretty annoying, in my opinion. And and I, I, I want to really drive home that message that we... That's not what we're about, you know. We're going to be having a relaunch of the site in the next couple months. And I promise you guys... It's going to be incredible. It's going to be worth it. It's not going to be stupid Web 2.0 bullshit. It's going to have a lot more content, a lot more stuff that you guys will be able to do and, and take part in. Um, it's going to be really fun. And ultimately, it's going to give us more power to have more content nestled into the site for you to browse on, to discover, to read about, and to make us your one stop You know, for these kinds of games. So... So yeah, um, so please keep visiting us, keep supporting us. Um, we have a lot of incredible stuff planned. Um, I promise when I announce this big new thing, um, just, just trust me um, because you know I've I helped manage businesses before and stuff like this, um, and it's it's worth it. You know, it's it's going to be worth it, and um, you know. And I have, you know, some people may not believe it, you know, but I have a roadmap for Niche Gamer. You know, it's it's going to keep growing. It's going to be more than what it is now, you know. And you guys can be a part of it. So so follow us on Twitter, you know, at that Niche Gamer. Like us on Facebook, Facebook, you know, slash Niche Gamer. Um, go to Patreon, Patreon slash Niche Gamer. Um, you know, and just and tell people about us. You know, we'll keep doing this. Um... You know, despite the fact that 
I have three classes this semester, and I'll be working all day, every day, the entire uh, Monday through Friday. <laughs> Uh, you know, so it's going to be interesting, but, you know, Carl's going to class full time, you know, I'll be graduating, he'll be, you know, he'll be graduating soon. You know, we, we, are all doing tons of stuff on top of Niche Gamer, but we're doing this because we love it. I take six classes a week, <laughs> so Jesus. I have six classes every semester. I didn't know it was One of them, much. actually one of them's online, this, yeah, well, you know, I like to do it big. Go big or go home. <laughs> I hear you, brother. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, so we're, we're passionate about this. We love it. So just keep supporting us. You know, please tell your friends about us, um, and we'll keep building this awesome community together. You know, this this awesome website. You know, it, it it was a dream of mine, and it's becoming real. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna slowly but surely build this gaming outlaw. Uh, community, you know, where we can just congregate and just have fun and just have none of the bullshit. So, anyway, my throat, uh, my voice is dying. <laughs> We've talked a lot. Uh, so, you know, I love you guys. You guys are supporting us so much. So, um, and we'll, we're going to try getting back into the, the swing of things, doing this every week, every week. So, anyway, so thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next week.